what are the main experiences in your career that shaped your thinking and ideas about what needs to be improved in uh, supply chain? Yes, I mean, in quite, quite some in 35 years, as you can imagine, but I have to say, um, they're all dwarfed by what we lived through with the current corona crisis because this is really disrupting supply and demand on a global scale and it's really unprecedented. And I don't know how it will play out, but there's certainly two elements, of, um, two elements for supply chain, important elements for supply chain that are already transpiring. That is one, clearly some weaknesses in our current supply chain designs have been exposed certainly in terms of resilience, and, and we as supply chain professionals will have to address that. And secondly, um, uh, certainly it has stepped up the awareness uh, about the criticality of supply chain. And, you know, in a way, this was a crash course for the world in, um, in supply chain management. And unfortunately, the word crash needs to be taken here in, in the literal sense. However, that does not mean that um, the previous experiences were not relevant anymore. And I want to actually pick three, uh, three that actually very much contributed and lead to the supply chain designs that currently failed us on some, uh, on some aspects. But I don't think that that makes the experience irrelevant because you know, capability are, are built on, on, on each other and, and, and are a consequence of, um, of, um, of progressing insights. And so that we are really, first of all, in the mid-2000s um, with General Motors building the supply chain capabilities for the first global platforms where we learned how to leverage and, and, and master economy of scale, uh, the size of the company. Uh, the second one, when I was leading the supply chain for, of the Philips Consumer Goods uh, Division, we're really in the financial, in the financial crisis which was a demand crisis, and we learned that we need to improve SNOP and inventory management to really create the right level of responsiveness to act in such a demand crisis. And the third one being working uh, with Marks and Spencers um, on creating multi-channel capability to really step up the supply chain to this new imperative of the customer proposition being um, uh, speed choice and convenience. Now, all of these experiences and, 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 you know, and, and capabilities being built, uh, even if, as I said, you know, they failed us to a certain extent now, uh, they're still valid. I mean, the things I talked about, like cost efficiency, responsiveness, uh, speed choice, convenience, they're still valid. But now I think what we learn today is that we have to add some more new high weight objectives in terms of um, resilience and sustainability. And so we need to find new balances there. And then, and then to your question, what what will that mean in terms of changes for supply chain? Well, you know, it looks like we're adding um, more objectives in a more volatile world and probably looking at a wider value chain. And that, will, and that means, from my point of view, that optimizing supply chains will become even more complex as, as, than it was in the past. And that will have a couple of consequences for our processes. First of all, I think they will need to, to run at a higher clock speed um, if we get a flare-up of the virus um, uh, later in the year in a certain region and it's wiping out supply and demand in that region for a certain um, period of time, then obviously a monthly SNOP is not going to help you to react to that. And the same is true for our supply chain designs. And with that, I mean the footprint of suppliers, manufacturing, distribution, how you allocate capacity to them. Um, obviously, um, this is currently pretty stable. We do it with ad hoc projects and so on. Uh, also, there we need to have much more agility in terms of changing these if needed at a higher clock speed, not just annual, but if and when it is needed. And finally, I think with to manage this complexity, digital supply chain capability, which was really uh, already very important, will become much more important to 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 to, to make sure that we can. Um, that we can run this process at much higher speed using more data um, and, and getting quicker insights of this data. And so I firmly believe that um, this crisis will be a turbocharger for supply chain digitalization. And in a way, that's closing the circle from COVID to earlier experience back to you know, what COVID means. The cost that you thought at MISI was on supply chain transformation. So um, what were the key messages that you were trying to deliver to the students? And 
how can junior and mid-level managers prepare for uh, this supply chain transformation? And there were, there were probably three main messages. Um, uh, first one being that um, when you set up a transformation, you have to select your changes and your projects really based on um, what is changing in customer propositions that you need to support with your supply chain. This is opposed to kind of a fear of missing out drive uh, of, uh, of, of not having the last uh, technology hype on board. And as funny as it sounds, that's very, that's very often the case. Um, now, in terms of this customer proposition, my focus was really on what I referred to before, related to my earliest experiences, that's what you do, uh, was really with convenience, responsiveness, also on efficiency. Um, and, and actually, currently, I'm rewriting that part of the course to also include uh, sustainability and resilience based on the experience we, we made now. So I probably would have kept the message but would, would have added these elements to it. Second main element is, or main message was that you can buy technology, but you cannot buy capability. Um, and capability is really about a set of consistent and aligned changes on, on process, technology, and people, as opposed to just buying, you know, a kind of a software package. Um, and a third one is that I believe firmly that technology is a very powerful enabler, uh, but I also believe equally firmly that uh, people will remain in the driving seat of the supply chain. And I see technology more as a kind of a driving assistant and a very powerful driving assistant and one that we will start to rely on more and more. And so I guess my main message to the students was that they have to develop the skills um, and competence needed to sit in this driving seat of this, you know, kind of digital or increasingly digital supply chain and, 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 and develop the skills to use these driver assistance in a good way. And that's actually seamlessly leading me to in, in, into the second, second questions. What should, what should, should supply chain managers prepare to, uh, to, 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 to play their role in the supply chain transformation? And you, you talked about junior um, mid-level, I, I, I don't like to talk in that terms. For me, it's about supply chain professionals. And so, you know, it's kind of the, the first thing they have to do is making sure they acquire the skills and competences to be in this driving seat. And um, obviously, that will still require the basics that we see today. You know, you have to understand your MRP, you have to understand your capacity management, your warehouse management, how you set up logistics, your SNOP, and so on but it will require more to um, function in the future world. And I, I'd like to take two out that I, um, that I um, reviewed and, and worked on in quite some details with students in March um, uh, when I was there with you in, in Kuala Lumpur. Um, and the first one is that supply chain leaders need to develop a stronger business acumen. They have to understand the business model. They have to understand how companies make money and what the role of their supply chain is in that. Um, and, and an important element is there, and something I see often missing, is having financial literacy. Really understanding the cash conversion cycle of your company, which is certainly now very, very important. A second thing is, and that's probably more complex even, is to, to have the ability to set up and manage these more complex workflows that we will see, um, that we will see, in, that we will see emerging. Not, not just because, because we have more, more players in the end-to-end -end value chain that will sit into these workflows, but also between <clears throat> people, and, um, people and, 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 and the digital workers, like the algorithms. And, that will require a certain element of what I would call technical literacy, digital technical literacy. That's not meaning every supply chain professional need to be a machine learning specialist or other digital technologies. But I think it is important that they understand functionally what is digital technology like machine learning or others can do, equally important what they cannot do and what the restrictions are, what, what the pitfalls are. And you need that to really leverage this technology in the right way and work with the technology experts because you need these technology experts, um, but they typically don't have the business savvy that uh, we should have in a company, so certainly not about your specific company. One, 
but secondly, um, they, they, they speak a type of different, a, a different language. And I think a supply chain leader or professional should have the ambition to be a translator between the business and, and, and this um, uh, technology expert. And so that's something where we, where we work on a lot um, um, during the different sessions um, with, um, with the master students. So I guess these were the main, the main elements and then, you know, leading from that, what is important for supply chain professionals. So when we talk about supply chain, especially on supply chain management, from your point of view, what is the relevancy of studying uh, supply chain management for nowadays business and can it help to add value in uh, any organizations? Well, uh, that's a very simple question to answer. It's a very strong and loud yes. It is very important. Um, I mean, it's clearly that the relevance and the, and, and the importance and the weight of the supply chain function has been gradually, gradually increasing over the years. But now really, as I said in the beginning, it, 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 you know, it made a step changer because everybody kind of painfully feels how important it is. And if it's not working, it's really disastrous. Um, and, and so I think it will, be, it, it, it will be very important for companies to have strong supply chain professionals to help them <clears throat> to run and, and now improve with weaknesses exposed their supply chains. And, with, and, and as with any profession, I think you learn it really on the job, but you also should have a good formal education basis to, to, to start from. And, and in my view, it's like any profession. It's like engineering or finance or medical. And I think we should, in supply chain, start to, to look at ourselves more like these other professions are doing. I mean, we would not have a bridge built by an engineer not having a formal engineering degree. And we would not have uh, you know, patients cared for by doctors not having a formal medical degree. You know, in the same way, I, I, I would say, um, supply chain formal education is very important to, um, to, 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 to provide industry and companies and businesses in general with the right <coughs> uh, supply chain professionals. You know, let me conclude by saying that from what I've seen in the last two years, I really think MISI, in the context of the global MIT um, uh, scale framework, is, is really doing a good job in, in delivering this educational basis. And, and I've been happy to be able to contribute my, my own small little bit to that. So um, good work, I would say. I guess I've, uh, I've uh, touched on, on, on my main messages. And so now just to reiterate, I think the crisis we go through now um, really, um, really in increases the importance of supply chain. And whether you're a company that is um, really, let's say, benefiting of having opportunity uh, out, of, out of this crisis. You know, think about the Amazon, you know, and, and there are some others where really the challenge is to take this opportunity by pushing all the new business to the operations. Or whether you're a company hit because your demand is, uh, is, is, is fully imploding, where, the, where, where you have to survive and really kind of uh, cash conservation is, 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 the, is, the, is, is the priority. In both situations, supply chain is ex extremely critical. And I hope that really supply chain professionals in their businesses will step up to this challenge and that, um, and that they will develop you know, the profession and the function further. Uh, so it really becomes a competitive advantage and, and the competitive advantage it can be and should be.